Hello, hello everyone! My name is Marcelo Fernandes and I am immensely happy to be here March 27th, 2023 to run this open Q&A session. I love to run these sessions because regardless if you are a Master Black Belt, a Black Belt, a Certified Green Belt, Yellow, White, or if you are just get getting started in your Lean Six Sigma journey, it's a pleasure to have you here, okay? So I love to take your questions and I'll do all my best. I'll give my 200% to help you understanding this beautiful and powerful method that is Lean Six Sigma. So if you can access our chat, the YouTube chat, please go ahead and type here your question, okay? Type here your question. It's interesting because I am preparing my session to, to be delivered in the United States. I'll be there in uh, end, end of April in Scottsdale. Scottsdale is relatively, no, it, it is close to Phoenix, very much close to Phoenix. Uh, Arizona and I'll be delivering a four-hour session in person at the Minitab Insights conference. It's the largest uh, Minitab conference in the world and I'll have a chance, I'll have the pleasure to deliver a Design for Six Sigma session there. And um, I was preparing here my session and uh, using the beautiful and wonderful um, uh, Sigma Zone Catapult. Okay, let me show you guys. If you don't know, hello, hello, Vindra. Hello, Hudzai. Hello, Louis. Thank you so much. In the go setting video clip, you multiply with 70% to get 20% of the baseline. Why did you use some? Oh, let's talk about that. Okay, okay. Let me just show you guys the the virtual catapult and this is an amazing way to practice i mean you can practice a lot of things here okay and again this is um, an amazing offer from a company named sigma zone okay so all the credits to sigma zone let me show you guys here oops uh, one second, one second. Properties. No, no, no. Automatic. Philips. So see, uh, sigmazone.com, you have this amazing and very useful catapult, virtual catapult, so you have basically four, five factors. You have the cup elevation, see. You have the bungee position. You have the firing angle, yeah. You have pin elevation and we have release angle. So you can play with these factors and as an output, you have the distance, see the distance um, and then you can fire again you know so in this case you can explore for example measurement system you know because someone can read here 255 someone can read 255.5 so this is definitely something that you can explore you can explore for example with the same parameterization you can explore capability analysis, you know, so you can um, fire like at least 30 times, ideally 100 times, and then you can measure and calculate CPK, PPK, Sigma level, defining, you know, um, some specification limits. You can also play with regression, you know, how does distance behave according, for example, to cup elevation, and then you can change you know, and play with different values for cup elevation. And obviously, 
and uh, this is my favorite you can use that to run uh, doe yeah and because i will be teaching design of experiments so i'll need to to talk about doe i'll be talking about doe monte carlo simulation screen doe uh, characterization doe optimization doe uh, optimizer desirability uh, i'll be talking about monte carlo simulation parameter design um, robustness process robustness like uh, factors and noise voice of the customer qfd we'll have a lot of fun we'll have, we'll have a lot of fun definitely a lot of fun it's funny because this now it's 2 p.m for me this morning i was teaching in portuguese so and tonight i'll be teaching in portuguese as well so when I teach in Portuguese and then I switch to English and then I switch back to Portuguese, the thing is, <laughs> I do not speak Portuguese, Portuguese nor English uh, at the level I would like to speak. Yeah? So I hope you guys understand me. Uh, wonderful. So let's take the first question. Okay. Let's take the first question. And once again, feel free to drop your question here. Hello, Frank. Hello, Hudzai, Vindra, Chosen, hello, Lumozi, how are you, Kandasami, Darlington, thank you for your question, I'll definitely address that. Ivan, thank you so much. And by the way, how is my audio on a scale from 0 to 10? How is my audio? I hope it is good. Let me know on a scale from 0 to 10. Please, how is my audio? Yeah? wonderful hello hello everyone hello yes a long time right wonderful amazing 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 so uh let's take the first question that is in the goal setting why do you multiply 70 percent to 21 percent of the baseline yeah in fact louis it is 70 percent from what we call entitlement okay so this is a recommendation okay it's pretty much a general recommendation you do not need to follow these like you know with full rigor but what is behind 70 percent or maybe i can give a simple example very simple example i love to play soccer i love to play soccer and then uh if i take if i take the number of the number of trials you know how many times how many shootouts you know to the goal shoots to the goal yeah let's say 10 10 and then i scored three times yeah or i had 100 shootouts and i scored 30. so i can argue that i have a 30 um, percent yield <laughs> I can argue that my performance is 30 percent yeah and then I take the best soccer player in my team or in the championship or in the region it depends on what kind of benchmark you are doing yeah what kind of benchmarking process you are running and then I see that uh, John, John, out of 100 shootouts, uh, he scored uh, 60, 60. So his performance is twice as better as my performance, yeah? So he has a 60% yield, yeah? 60% versus my performance, that is 30%. Marcelinho 30, John 60%, or João in Brazil 60%. So I can simply go ahead and say, now I'm going to start a continuous improvement initiative, continuous improvement project, where I'll be writing down my problem statement, I'll be measuring my performance in details, I'll be understanding the root cause. Am I missing 70% of my shootouts because 
um, the way I eat, the way I exercise, or simply the way I am hitting the ball. Maybe it's just a matter of the ball itself, or maybe it's just a matter of the environment, the conditions. I can, I can, I can uh, direct, you know, <laughs> the potential cause to the grass, the quality of the grass, you know, the field itself. Or maybe it, because it was raining, you know. So after I populate with the potential causes, I will be deep diving and prioritizing to the most critical potential causes, finding the root cause, validating the root cause with stats, and then implementing my solutions. Yes. Yeah? So I need to set a goal. So should I go ahead and set a goal of 60%? So from 30, I want to go to 60%. And just to guarantee that we are at the same page, what is the gap? Type here for me. If I am operating at the 30% level and my benchmark is operating at the 60% level, what is the gap that I have here? Just to guarantee that we are at the same level, at the same page. 30. Beautiful. Beautiful. So I can set 30 or, Louis, 70% of 30. It's just a way to be more feasible. Yeah? So 70, yes, 70% of 30% of 30% would be 21%. So instead of setting, instead of setting my target as the benchmark, I will take 70% of the gap. And we call this entitlement. Entitlement. Yeah? 30% of the of the gap yeah so it would be 21 so instead of setting a target of 60% I'm gonna set a target of you guys tell me of what beautiful Frank beautiful Frank 51% that is my baseline 30% is my baseline plus 70% of the gap but again uh, we need to be very careful because remember that a target must be smart specific measurable achievable achievable because if your target is not achievable uh, the team will be demotivated yeah relevant and result oriented and, and time bound time bound is smart right so why am i saying that be very careful with your benchmark be very careful you know why why did i choose the best soccer player why did i pick joão because he's the best be careful be careful maybe i should select the best player at my age <laughs> because maybe joão is 20 years old so maybe it's not fair to benchmark you know a 44 year old player with a 20 year old or 21 years old uh, player you know so maybe you want to go for the best soccer player from 40 to 50 years old maybe and then you see that he scores 45 percent then you take 70 percent from 15 and not 70% from 30, yeah? Does it make sense? So it is very easy to set hard to achieve targets. And in my point of view, from my experience, I don't like this conversation like shoot to the moon, you know? Have you guys heard that? Some leaders like to set super aggressive targets, super aggressive targets, because then if we get like 5% of that, 10% of that, we are good. I don't like that. 
when I am leading projects or, or mentoring my mentees, I do not recommend that. Why? Why? Because when your team feels that this is challenging, but it is achievable, it feels, you know, your team with a certain kind of energy, you know, that is super important, super important. If you set up front, you know, a target that the experts consider, you know, uh, extremely hard to be achieved. I do have a target that is to certify 100,000 people for free as white belts. I don't know if you guys know that. This target was set in June 2020. It was a five-year target. June 2020. Yeah? So, I really hope that by June 2025, I can come here and celebrate the 100,000 people certified for free mark. Yeah? Right now, we are at the 65,000 mark. 65. So, we are more than halfway through. Yeah, almost two thirties, almost two thirties. Yes. So, and uh, we still have two more years, a little bit more than two years. So see, see that you can feel that it is achievable. It is something that we can make it. So you, it, it is easier to keep motivated, you know, and uh, motivate the entire team without, you know, being stressed and, um, and if you feel that it is to lose, then obviously you can you can change the target for sure. And by the way, it is normal. It is common. It is common to 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 update your your goal statement in Project Charter. It is common. But please get the full alignment with process owner, champion, and your master black belt and your mentor. Okay? Full alignment, full alignment, okay? Realistic goal setting, beautiful, Vindra, yeah, beautiful. Need to walk before you can run, exactly. Little by little, little by little, yeah? Yes, of course, now the issue was for me to register Hmm. Yeah, let's let's see. Let's let let's talk about that for sure, okay? Uh Louise, let me know if that was helpful. Please let me know if that was helpful. Okay? Guys, many people were asking about um green belt wave, okay? Green belt wave. So, uh, first of all, I do prefer I think it's a better use of of our time if we discuss technical topics okay it's just my opinion i am doing my best to spend at least one hour per week to come here and uh, answer um answer technical questions but if you guys want to talk about logistics admin stuff um i can talk a little bit about that as well but Keep in your heart, maybe in your mind, that maybe it's a better use of our time if if we concentrate on technical questions, okay? Guys, very easy. We open up green belt waves always after white belt. So when can you come up to a green belt wave? Now, no, now it is closed. It is closed. Why? Because we have just started a wave few uh, mm, few weeks ago. Few weeks ago, yeah. And then we have our weekly our weekly mentoring sessions, and then we have like the extended version of mini tab. You know, so there is a lot of um, there is a lot of work behind when we set a green belt wave to get started on that day, you know? So, even knowing that the majority of the content is recorded, 
we have a hybrid experience. It is a hybrid experience. We have, you know, live session, mentoring sessions optional, but they are live sessions. We have our recorded content. We have the mini tab, you know, um, licenses as well. So if you missed, if you missed a green belt wave, it's not something like, okay, in two weeks from now, I'm going to email Marcelo and then I can get in. No, it's not. It's not like this, unfortunately, unfortunately. So uh, I feel very honored, very happy to know that so many people, so many people, and we get a lot of emails. We get a lot of emails. Marcelo, I want to do Green Belt right now. On a commercial point of view, I should be putting all of you guys in these ongoing waves on a commercial point of view. But I think you guys already know that commercial is important for us, but it is not the most important thing. Because we, I have already constructed a brand. Yeah, humbly speaking, humbly speaking, we do already have a brand. Branding is important. Reputation, you know? I have a name in a continuous improvement scene in Brazil and outside Brazil. So it's not only commercial. I don't want, you know, simply get you registered and then, you know, I, I could. I could simply send you a link. It, that's here and that, that's the link and go ahead. No, no, no. We, we work in multiple work, work streams. We have Hotmart, but we have the weekly mentoring sessions. We have the technical email channel. We have the LinkedIn community exclusive for GBs and BBs. So it's a serious thing. And that's why we have out of five stars, the overall score 4.9. And that's why we have in a little bit more than two years that we went digital and global, uh, a little bit, uh, almost three years. And that's why we have more than 70,000 students. And that's why we have more than 4,000 paid green belts and black belts, you know? And happy every single day you guys can see on LinkedIn, you know, a testimonial from a, from a student, you know, that got certified and had uh, his or her career impacted. So I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry when you guys send an email, you know, and we cannot, and we cannot simply reply away. We cannot simply put you on an ongoing wave because our main objective, yeah, our main objective is definitely to transform your career. And in order to properly, in, in order, I cannot guarantee that I will transform your career. I can do all my best. I cannot guarantee that. But in order to maximize the chances to promote or to help you to have this positive transformation in your career, we operate like that in waves, in waves, okay? So whenever you see a white belt, you know, um, wave being advertised, know that after that, we'll be opening up for Green Belt. Okay? Wonderful. With love. Can you type here for me if you can feel the love. Can you feel the love when I speak like that? Sometimes I speak um, with high energy. So I don't want to sound aggressive. I want I, I hope you guys understand that I truly care. I truly, I truly care about my students. I truly care about my students. Many times when I walk here in my city or mainly in Sao Paulo, I meet in person my students, you know, sometimes they just hug me, they just want to pay me a coffee, you know, There's, my wife sometimes she gets annoyed, yeah, she gets annoyed, she gets annoyed. We went to the gym here close to my house, I have a lot of students from my city, digital students from my city, you know, and we went to the gym. And then there was um, Luana, you know, one of my students. And then she asked to take a picture, you know, and she started speaking so beautiful words about the transformation in her, her career after Green Belt. You know, so this is the kind of legacy. Yeah, that's the kind of legacy that I am interested in. 
Again, on a commercial point of view, I should simply register whenever a student wants to pay me for the green belt. But it's, it's not like this. It is not like this. And believe me, believe me, I have a lot of friends, a lot of friends that are professors, they have their own companies, and I have consultants that are friends of mine. They say that I am crazy. They say that I am crazy of not getting, you know, these students. They say that I am crazy. Crazy on a commercial point of view. But once again, I am not saying that commercial is not important, but it is definitely not the most important thing. It is definitely. It is, uh, if there is any black belt or, 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 or certified green belt here, you can picture desirability function. <laughs> For me, it's like multi-objective optimization. I have multiple eyes. You know, I know that it is important to have a good financial health. It's a business. Okay, I know that. But I, I want to I wanna also be, you know, happy. I want to be emotionally, physically happy. Okay, I have a family. I have a... And then there is a legacy. There is a legacy. There is career transformation. So if I put all of these on a multi-objective optimization, desirability, optimizer, desirability, you know, it's like going to the last column on importance. <laughs> and then importance for the career transformation i would place a 10 legacy i would place a nine uh family in general i would place a 10 as well and uh commercial i would place an eight or a seven you know and then let's run the the optimizer if you are not a certified green belt i know i missed you right now but but that's the thing you know that's the thing <laughs> Yeah, Vindra, do you like it? I, I knew you would love that. Vindra is one of the most engaged students ever. Ever, ever. I feel honored and I feel blessed to be among uh, students like Vindra. Yeah? And all of you guys, thank you so very much. Wonderful. Can you feel the love? Yeah? Beautiful. So let me go back again. I will be taking, I will be taking the admin logistics questions, but I think we should, you know, concentrate maybe on the more technical, on the more technical questions. If you, if you don't mind, with love, respectfully, okay. Darlington. Yeah, Darlington, please check, also check the email, if it is the, the right email, okay? Because, yeah, S-U-P-P-O-R-T at mftreinamentos.com. There is no BR at the end, okay? Hello, Ivan, how are you? Hello, Lebogang. Vindra, Professor, can you give an overview of the different capabilities and usefulness of DOE, like the different techniques and analysis in DOE. Oh, Vindra, <laughs> that's a good one, Vindra. And because this is an open Q&A, let me just give a flavor about what is design of experiments. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, no, and let me pin, I think I'll be pinning the questions so you guys, everybody knows uh, which question am I addressing, okay? So I hope you guys can see. Let me know if you guys can see when I pin the question. Can you see it? So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, by far, by far, by far, the most important person for us, for us, in the context of continuous improvement, operational excellence, when we speak about statistics is um, Ronald Fisher. Ronald Fisher is the successor of Charles Darwin. Okay, Ronald Fisher from the UK, yeah, uh, went to the United States and came back, came back with his heart, you know, full of desire 
of um, of optimizing the processes related to agriculture you know because as you know if you compare for example uk versus united states i think i don't need to speak about the difference in terms of land yeah so how can how can fisher thinking ronald fisher thinking how can we optimize the processes related to agriculture so we can have a more food you know uh, with the same land considering that it would be a little bit difficult maybe impossible to expand you know uh, uh, the factor land yeah and then uh, one of the techniques that were created as part of this adventure was the OE design of experiments and we can say that until today the OE design of experiments by far is the most powerful technique in Lean Six Sigma because design of experiments we are pretty much checking checking how does a response variable like the distance here in the catapult how does a response variable behave according to factors you know and these in fact this is the real game in fact if you understand if you understand if you fully understand in processes how does a y behave according to an x or multiple x's that's it so we are talking about continuous improvement we are talking about root cause analysis because you will be finding what they call vital few the few x's few x's that you know truly impact your response Maybe you don't need to worry very much about the cheese bread brand, but oven temperature, you need to be very careful. Oven temperature or, or baking time, you know, it is very, very important. And believe me, in all processes, you do have a Pareto. You will find the Pareto. There are few factors that you know 20 factors out of 100 that are responsible for 80 percent of your effects you know you can explain you know you can explain the effect you know with with few items with few items if you are lucky enough to have a good database yeah with historical data of your processes you can go ahead and run regressions and run regressions and by the way regression if we think in terms of impact effort matrix regression we are talking about high in potential high impact high return with very low effort sometimes with a couple of clicks you can find some amazing wonderful insights you know amazing it happened to me many times and it still happens i do a lot of consultancy for minitab i think you guys know that i do work as a contractor for minitab for training but also for consultancy yeah so we work a lot with uh, pharmaceutical mining mining company as well automotive with the universities yes and uh, we i had a, a recent a recent um, consultancy uh, work where um, in two or three meetings but with a couple of clicks we were able to find you know amazing insights you know it's it's so sad that the vast majority of these projects they are classified they are they have sensitive content so it is so sad that in continuous improvement I cannot disclosure a lot of these a lot of these yes or all the details but it is definitely super 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 rich okay and powerful regression but many times you don't have this historical data many times you simply don't have the historical data you don't have so you have reached what they call the state of art when you reach the state of art you need to run experiments you need to run experiments and then Vindra, 
uh, there are basically three families families of the OEs of the OE. The first family is what we call screening the OE. Screening the OE when you have some people say more than six factors, some people say more than ten factors. Let's say when you have a good number of factors, okay? Because remember that the experimental conditions vary. The, experiment, the number of ex experimental conditions varies exponentially as a function of the number of factors. So if we are talking about the two-level experiment, if we have two factors, then we are talking about four runs or four experimental conditions, four runs. If we are talking about three factors, just one more factor, it's two power three. So we are talking about eight. If we consider one replicate, then 16. If we have four factors, just one more factor, 2 power 4, so 16. If we have five factors, 2 power 5, 32. If we have six factors, 2 power 6, 64. If we have seven factors, 128, 256, 512. If we have 10 factors, we are talking about 1024 experiments. If we have one replicate, then 2048. So see that on the X scale, I am increasing the number of factors. Y scale, it is increasing exponentially, exponentially. So, 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 here we need to talk about the concept of fractioning our experiments. Half fraction, one for a fraction, you know, and um, I mean, we can talk there in Minitab. We have a 80 hour course only about Minitab, Vindra, 80, 80 hour course only about Minitab. So this is, um, this is a, a, a rich, this is a rich area. There is a lot to talk about this. So I'm trying to simplify. But the first family is screening the OE. And there you have the definitive screening, the OE. You have plaque Berman. That's another type of the OE. But basically the idea is you have a lot of factors and you just want to shrink the list down. You just want to reduce the list. From 10 factors, I want to find 5 factors. The most critical five factors. Are we talking about modeling? No, we are not talking about modeling. You will not be predicting process performance with a screening DOE, with a plaque Berman. Not at all. Nor with a definitive screening. Nor with a resolution for fraction DOE, factorial. I would not recommend. Resolution 3, not at all. Resolution 5, maybe. Resolution 6, then maybe you are on, a, on the safe side, you know? Resolution 7, we are good. We are good, yeah? So screening, just to shrink down the list of factors. And then we have a second family named characterization DOE, DOEs for modeling, for modeling, yeah? And here we have basically, basically full factorial, to keep it simple, basically full factorial. Two level experiments with center point, so you can check curvature. You cannot model, but you can check curvature. And then you have the 30 family, 30, and for characterization, you have a model, then you can check R square, then you can go for optimizer, then we can talk about parameter design, so you can use to, to improve your processes. Yes, you can use, you can use. And here we recommend max five factors, max five factors. And then from there, you may go you may go to what we call DOEs for optimization. Yeah? And here my recommendation is response surface methodology with CCD, central composite design. Yeah? And then you have 
five, let's say, levels per factor. And here we recommend two max three factors. And here it's super powerful, super powerful, because you cannot only check a non-linearity, but you can also model non-linearity. So you have in your model the quadratic terms, you know, and um, and then you have your again a lot of center points but not only just to indicate if if um, the behavior is linear or not pretty much to model okay so again three types of uh, three doe families screening characterization optimization yeah and guys uh this is black belt content, black belt content. In green belt, we talk about full factorial, but we do not talk about fraction. We do not talk about um, response surface methodology. Um, we do not talk about um, we do not talk about uh, response surface methodology nor definitive screening. Yeah. Um, yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, questions, questions, questions. So, again, uh, screening the OE. We have um, Plecht Berman, definitive screening, fractional, fractional factorial, um, then characterization, full factorial, and optimization response surface methodology yeah. let me know if that was helpful Vindra hello hello Lebogang hello Roberto hello Joy thank you so much Oh, okay great question Maria thank you let's talk about that let's talk about that yeah so let's talk about salaries let's talk about how much you can charge as a consultant and uh, first of all it changes a lot from country to country Mar Maria it changes a lot from country to country but one of the ways to check that is let me show you guys here you can Google Glassdoor black belt for example and let me share the screen with you so here it is Brazil see it is Brazil and then you can change here um, to your country you know uh, so we have in Brazil salaries like uh, this is monthly salary from um, 12 to 14 thousand caterpillar from 7 to 11 Ambev from 15 to, to 17 you know um, right now in Brazil we are facing a kind of um, not so easy situation in terms of the value of our currency yeah so um, in terms of dollar, dollars, that would be around or maybe we can do this in the United States. Let me see here. Uh, I need to <laughs> Black Belt uh, USA Glass Door. So again, we need to be very careful here because, 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 because. Uh, we are talking about United States, okay? So please be very careful. The, uh, be very careful in uh, in um, generalizing these results, okay? Because this is considered a very good salary, yes? Around 
170 per year right around 170 per year and then you have like examples here Geico 183 180 176 uh, 3m 174 DuPont 170 yeah uh, it is not it is not uncommon to see BBs like with um, full compensation around 200 US dollars per year yeah in the US it is not very difficult to find that yeah like full compensation bonus and everything now in terms of consultancy yeah it also depends on the country where you are but here in Brazil I do recommend start by 100 reais that would be 20 dollars to zero but again it is Brazil right now in terms of economy we are struggling and facing some challenges so it depends on country to country in the United States you can get started with 100 dollars per hour yeah as a black belt definitely definitely wonderful Maria thank you so much for your question let me know if I properly answered No, thank you, Darlington. Thank you. I, I truly appreciate your words. And uh, again, I hope you guys can feel the love. You know, the, the only thing is that you guys can only get into Greenbelt after, yeah, when we open up a specific wave. It's not like a shelf item, you know, it's not like grab and go. <laughs> yeah. And yes, Green Belt is, is is definitely paid. Yeah, Yellow Belt. When you come to Green Belt, you get Yellow Belt for free as a bonus, as a bonus for Green Belt. Yeah. Thank you, Monica. It's a pleasure to have you here. Wonderful, Louise. Professor, when will registration for the next green belt and yellow belt be available? I truly don't know. And there is a chance that we don't have another one this year. There is a chance. What I know, if I had to tell you for sure, for sure, uh, it is Jan 2024, 2024. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. Okay. Gen 2024, it is almost 100%. Hello, hello, Obed. It's you can verify the authenticity of uh, your certificate in our website, mftreinamentos.com. Okay, mftreinamentos.com. I think last session I got too too much high energy talking about you know discount and everything so yes there is a discount um, every time that we open up for registration first day there is a good discount okay Let's see, let's see, let's see. If the company uh, if the company doesn't have historic data, for how long would it be enough to collect data to get a valid sample? Maria, that's a great question. It really depends. 
on the nature of your process as a rule of thumb 12 months but this is a general recommendation Maria general recommendation but if you don't have historical data you can definitely run a DOE yeah thank you very much professor wonderful <laughs> wonderful I'm glad to know Vindra thank you so very much Frank professor can you confirm that the upper control limit and lower control limits are just an agreed convention three sigma as opposed to a physical process limit and perhaps also explain why only three sigma thank you wonderful question Frank so see first of all first of all when we take a probability distribution let me see if I can quickly plot here for you when we take a probability distribution take a look here on my screen let's suppose normal okay so this is a normal probability distribution right so uh, where does it start where does it end where does it start and where does it end I don't know if you can see <laughs> I don't know if you can see but apparently the blue line apparently the blue line or you guys tell me type here for me type here let me see where does it start and where does it end when we talk about a normal probability distribution where does it start is that minus 5 minus 10 minus 20 minus 100 until 10 20 where does it start thank you Samson I appreciate your words It starts on minus infinite and it ends on plus infinite. But the area under the curve is one, is 100%. So apparently we have a contradiction. We have a contradiction. And uh, if I say that it starts on minus infinite and it ends on plus infinite, I am saying that everything is possible. It's a beautiful quote, right? Everything is possible. But the farther from the mean on a normal probability distribution, the lower the probability. And the farther from the minus three, plus three mark marks even closer to zero it's an asymptotic behavior asymptotic behavior means it seems that it will touch the x scale but it doesn't touch they will they will meet on the infinite or minus infinite so as a convention as a convention they decided they decided to give a cut you know and just and just and just consider minus 3 to plus 3 and what is minus 3 to plus 3 minus 3 to plus 3 I'm not talking about 100%. I'm not talking about 100%, but I am talking about almost 100%. 99.73. 99.73. And we consider 99.73 the virtual 100, the practical 100. Now, 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 coming using this concept in the context of control charts if your data behaves according to a normal probability distribution very likely 
you have your control limits being calculated based on the normal probability distribution and that's why you have plus three minus three from the mean so they are definitely not defined you can set but it's not recommended because if you take the minus three and plus three what we are saying is everything everything within control charts within plus or minus three standard deviations we can consider as something common and that's why we call common causes because you will be seeing variation there but we call common cause variation the process varies but varies due to natural you know it's natural variation common cause there is nothing you know special nothing special yeah <laughs> it's crazy right <laughs> yeah it's beautiful right it's beautiful so it's calculated just remember that for control charts um we do not use the the standard deviation from the data points we need to estimate okay so if we are talking about x bar s x bar r imr uh, there is an important conversation about the um, the unbiased constants okay an important conversation so just be aware okay but that's why we use plus or minus three yeah my pleasure my pleasure frank thanks for your question thanks for your question uh please advise on how to learn minitab and can i use excel if i am not copying with minitab i do see that minitab has concepts that excel doesn't have like basic stats regression etc yeah this is something that i am always reinforcing with my students that even knowing that i am a, a minitab contractor that i have um that I am a Minitab certified instructor, that I have free access to, to Minitab to talk to the developers. My mentor at Minitab is Scott Kowalski, that is uh, the guy that wrote the official Minitab manual with Douglas Montgomery, yeah? Even knowing that, uh, that I am a huge fan of Minitab, I make clear eh, to everybody no one is obligated to use Minitab. Minitab is the most used statistical software in the globe, but you can use Excel. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Can you use a software from competitor? If I see you guys using Jump, for example, it's okay. It is okay. It's okay. If you are good in R, R, it is free of charge, just go ahead and use R because <clears throat> what we teach what we te the way we teach Lean Six Sigma for you guys is I like to teach principles and concepts and then I need to talk about tools and techniques but I am always talk like the explanation I gave now I hope you guys understood I was touching principles and concepts why because if you understand principles and concepts at some point you don't need me anymore at some point you'll be flying your own flights and probably much higher than my flights you know the true mentor the real mentor does not create any sort of dependency on mentees so that's why i teach concepts and principles showing tools and techniques but again if you use quimo in green belt i teach quimo for process mapping if you use quimo wonderful if you use bizadi wonderful if you use visio wonderful if you use post-its i'm okay with that if you run your hypothesis test by hand you know 
calculating the critical value, I'm okay with that as ASQ does. If you use, again, jump or statistica or action or any software, any software. The most important thing for me is that you understand that there is a funnel. Do you understand there is a funnel that you have potential causes that you need to diverge, you need to talk to people, you need to walk the process, you need to go to Gamba, and then you have a list of potential causes, and then you shrink down to a list of potential causes using multi-voting pairwise, and then you come to the most critical potential cause, and then you validate using, for example, two sample T two proportions. And why do you need to use two sample T? Because we are applying OFET. OFET is much better than try and error. Yeah? But if you used two sample T with R, with Jump, with Minitab, with Excel, as your Lean Six Sigma mentor, I don't care. I don't care. Okay? My pleasure, my pleasure, Monica. Professor, I would like to join now the Black Belt courses. For some personal reasons, I wasn't able to register. So see, Arcel, for Black Belt, is, it is even harder. Because Black Belt, we have live sessions. Tomorrow, 20 live sessions. Tomorrow, we have session number 8. So if you join us now, you've missed seven live sessions. They are recorded. I do record all of them. But you missed the opportunity to interact with me because Black Belt, it's a much... It's a, the number of participants. It's a much shorter list of participants. Yeah? So it's a much more VIP experience. Uh, it's live and I do also record. So if you join now... Marcel, you'll be missing almost half of the course. So, next year, my friend, 2024, okay? So, again, again, on a commercial point of view, on a commercial point of view, I just missed an opportunity of a couple of thousand dollars, you know? But I don't care. I am okay with that. I'm okay with that. Yeah, because I wanna I wanna guarantee that Arcel is having the best black belt experience. I wanna guarantee that. Or in, unfortunately I cannot guarantee that. I wanna give my two hundred percent yeah on on my controllable factors and maximize the chances of Arcel having an amazing black belt experience. Yeah, and then my heart is in peace, my mind is in peace, I can properly sleep, I can be happy with my family, yeah, and, and everything flows just naturally, naturally, beautifully, okay, beautifully, that's it, simple, 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 simple. When we open up a registration, you come and register. After that, you need to wait for another opportunity. Yeah. Simple, very simple, very simple. Thank you, Samson. I appreciate that. Same thing for Green Belt, Margaret. So whenever you see us advertising White Belt, know that after that we'll have um, a Green Belt. And every time that you guys see Advanced, topics uh, know that we'll have a black belt okay I don't know if we'll have another wave this year I truly don't know so I prefer for you guys to prepare on uh, at the beginning of 2024 okay but we'll have these weekly live sessions here okay for free for free ba -ba -da -ba -da. Yeah, green belt and yellow, it's like 60 hours, yeah? Yes, Frank, beautiful, beautiful. 
yeah guys uh, we have already already passed normally I spend like 30 minutes to one hour so we have already passed here the top of the hour in seven minutes so I just would like to thank you so very much for your participation here okay thank you so very much for your level of engagement and I'll keep doing all my best to stay here with you guys okay at least once a week so sometimes i'll need to adjust as i adjusted now moving from tuesday to monday adjusting the the time you know but i'll keep doing my 200 percent to touch base with you guys at least once a week okay thank you very much and have a blessed week have a blessed week have an amazing week ahead okay and i wish to all of you guys all the best a lot of victories I wish from the very bottom of my heart that you can face your challenges yeah and win your battles fight the right battles fight the right battles and I wish from the bottom of my heart that you win win them all win them all Okay, thank you guys. Thank you so very much.